Just be very central here. Hey everybody. As you should know, the Apple iPhone SE 2020 came out recently and it shook a lot of people. A cheap budget phone in 2020. That's something that really wasn't being shown a lot. This is the first compact phone of 2020. No, so I went through a bit of research, I guess, and I found two other phones like and I was wondering which phone will come out on top. Keep watching to find out. Only thing that changed between the iPhone SE 2020 and the iPhone 8 is the processor. So I was thinking, let's see how the processor matches up against the others. Let's start off. As you would expect, it is in first place. The processor is first. And then the Snapdragon 855 would land right below it in second place. Not too far off, but a decent enough change. Because the 818 Bionic is one of the, is pretty much the most or the best processor in the world right now. So that's great. You're getting a processor like that in a $400 phone, a compact phone like that. So that's a great alert. Moving on to the cores. You can see that I would say that Samsung S10 has the best core system. I'm not sure which country, but uh, I think in the USA, this one. Hopefully, I am correct. <laughs> and then, Sean Moodland will wait below it. And to be honest, the cores were never shown as a strong point in the Apple, it was always the chipset. But moving on, that's when SC starts to grab again at first place with the iOS 3 13, which is, I will land that in first place. You are getting soft updates for the next five years. So that's a plus. And then you have the Samsung F10e, which starts off with Android 9, but is upgradable to Android 10, second place. Xiaomi then lands itself in last because it can't upgrade, it stays at iPhone, sorry, stays at Android 3. Sorry, Android 9. I'm sorry. Then you have the Adreno 640. I would say Adreno 640 is probably the best GPU out of the three of these. Then the Apple GPU. And then Adreno 616. Xiaomi isn't looking very good here. But moving on, you have, as I said, this is a competition for compact phones. So usually I would check to see which phone is bigger. But in this case, I'm trying to see which phone is smaller. And in that case, iPhone SE lands on top. So S10e lands in second place. And the Samsung S10e lands itself in third place. Same thing with weight. They have the same weight in that order. iPhone is the lightest phone. Samsung is the second lightest phone. And Xiaomi is the heaviest phone. In terms of strong build quality, that's where iPhone lands in last, at least to probably tie. In terms of the SIM, that's the toss up between Samsung S10e and the Xiaomi as well. Display quality. No, all the way said, I'm judging to see which phone is smaller in terms of body. This is a bit different. Although you may want a small phone to hold in your hand. It's all, I've never heard anyone complain about having a big display. Because sometimes you always want to you always want to see how well the stuff is as good as possible. And also in that case, Xiaomi wins. And also, Xiaomi has the best resolution as well. iPhone will land itself in last place in that because it has a 750p pixel resolution. That's one of the worst resolutions you'll find in 2020, if not the worst. Come on now. Xiaomi definitely wins this. Xiaomi is the only phone here with three cameras, which is impressive for a $300 phone. And then the Samsung s with two cameras and the iPhone SE with three. The only thing this means is that the more cameras instantly translate into better phone or the more cameras instantly translate into better picture because that's simply not true. The reason why Xiaomi wins is because one, it has the highest pixel rate or in terms of the 
wide camera, which is a plus. Usually for the iPhone, pixels don't matter, but in this case, it kind of does matter. Also, the reason why I put Samsung S10 above the iPhone SE 2 is because it also has a feature with ultra wide camera, super steady video, which is something that a lot of people who are possibly on a boat ride and they want to take a video, they will do that. Another reason why Xiaomi and the Samsung Beats iPhone is because of this right here 720p at 960 FPS. A lot of people like to see their videos as smooth as possible. Xiaomi and Samsung grants that. Moving on to the selfie camera. If you want to to get a bit more of a toss up now, so I would say that it's a toss up between all three of these, to be honest. You have features such as face detection, dual video call, and all two of Xiaomi men have many features. They have the best quality selfie camera. And also, iPhone's selfie camera is in a white camera, which is a huge downgrade from the white camera in Xiaomi and Samsung. So, moving on, I would I honestly, it's pretty much personal preference for me. But just remember this, Samsung has 2160p at, it's available, <laughs> Most none of these other phones have it available, so that's a plus already. Moving on to sound, definitely I have to say Samsung wins here, because you have to remember that these are budget phones, and the average budget consumer isn't too much into using a wireless headphone, so a headphone jack is extremely important and this was actually a mistake I made Xiaomi does not have a headphone jack this is a mistake I made when I was typing it up Xiaomi doesn't have a headphone jack and iPhone doesn't have a headphone jack I mean Samsung is only one of the headphone jack so <laughs> that instantly put Samsung in first also not just that but in terms of the actual sound quality Samsung for me test I've seen Samsung has the best sound quality Xiaomi second and this the SE2 has an average sound quality so yeah this is what I'm going to work with moving on the battery I feel a lot of people complaining about the iPhone SE having a battery that drains way too fast it's a 1821 milliampere battery something that you haven't seen from since 2018 if not further back but that's a really bad battery but some people say they don't mind it because of this 50 percent in 30 minutes is a huge plus and it seems like it wasn't just advertised people are saying that their phones are charging to 100 percent in one hour so i guess it wasn't false advertising it is true in some aspects when the phone is fresh of course so you have to kind of balance it out whether you want a long battery life or you want fast charging. In terms of the fastest charging, iPhone wins, but in terms of battery life, iPhone definitely comes dead now, followed by the Xiaomi, and first place would be Samsung. In terms of charging, I would kind of put Samsung S10e up there because it has so many features with charging. USB power delivery, fast charging, wireless charging, power bank reverse wireless charging at 9 watts that's incredible to have reverse wireless charging at 9 watts is incredible especially for such a cheap phone but I digress with this list <laughs> with this ranking I have on screen moving on as, as you can see here the reason why iPhone is in case because it came out recently not many people have tested it so I can't actually put it here moving on and and to the benchmark of 325,192 for Samsung and uh, and to the benchmark of 108,057 for Xiaomi. Price and storage. Samsung and iPhone are the only phones that can go up to 256 GB. Xiaomi stops at 128 GB and has no card slot, which is a huge disadvantage in this. It's the cheapest phone to be fair, but still, you know, some people really like to have a card slot just in case. 
Um, there's a, there's a 64 gigabyte variant, but I don't know the price of it. I tried to look it up, but I just couldn't find it. I don't think they sell anymore. The Samsung S10e is being sold for $239.95 on Amazon, including $100 more for the 256 gigabyte version. Remember that this is some of these prices may be the refurbished prices, so you have to look out for that. Some people don't mind getting a refurbished phone, others hate refurbished phone, they will never buy a refurbished phone, which is everyone has their own, um, everyone has their own pick and choose, everyone has their own opinions. The iPhone SE, what you have to remember is that this. As we start to increase in terms of storage, the price increased by $50 from 64 to 128 GB, then goes up by an extra 100 for the 256 GB variant. And also, it only has 3 GB of RAM. Although iPhone is really good at using a small amount of RAM, later on, you're going to eventually, as the demand for RAM grows in more upcoming apps, certain games may take up a whole 2 gigabytes of RAM, regardless of what kind of processor you have. Eventually, you're gonna have to start playing the small gigabyte of RAM game and have to start stacking up on RAM like Samsung and Xiaomi and the other Android companies. But I digress from that point, which phone would I choose overall? I definitely have to go with the Samsung. Overall, I have to go with Samsung and then probably the iPhone SE and the Xiaomi in life, as usual. <laughs> the Xiaomi isn't a bad phone, it's just that compared to these two, it's just gonna have to take the last place. <laughs> it's the cheapest phone, so don't forget that. There's a couple of other phones in the series that are really good, but to close off, I have to say Samsung F10e, you'll get the best of both, of both worlds. A good camera, you get an ultra wide lens, you get good gaming quality, probably easily the best out of the three of these by far. You get a good, you get good services. You have updates for the next two years or the next one year. No, <laughs> but if you're into the iPhone ecosystem, definitely buy the iPhone SE too. <laughs> It's a cheap, it's probably the cheapest phone iPhone ever brought out with a starting price like that. Sorry, it is the cheapest phone iPhone ever brought out. So, yeah, but personally, I have to choose to Samsung F10. So, that's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, and comment which phone do you like the most. Don't be if you sent it out. <laughs>